No, no, gang. But all right, so now this is your girl's recording. Let's go ahead and start up the damn reactions. Why is I'm getting notifications the moment it is? I, I press the record button. Damn. So, Louisa, shout outs to you. We're going to be talking about a particular <clears throat> person, celebrity, per the usual, like what we always do. Nah, you already know. Now nah, I got to go into it. Lord D, bro. All right. Drake's dark history with female celebrities. And we've kind of talked about stuff we're pertaining to Drake before. So this is no surprise when it is that we're deep diving into another one. I got that. So without further ado, y'all, let's get into this next video, y'all. Let's do it. Shut up. We're gonna rank Drake's worst relationships ranging from bad to absolutely dreadful. So let's start by taking a look at his recent jabs at Megan Thee Stallion and his album Her Loss, which left fans scratching their heads, wondering what exactly happened between them. It's over a minute. Nigga bump, you know? Megan is popularly known for chart topping hits like WAP with Cardi B, Captain Hook, and Body, and has become one of the biggest female rappers in the game. However, more recently, she's made headlines for a more serious reason after being shot by Canadian rapper Tory Lanez in 2020. This incident led to a highly publicized trial, which concluded with Lanez being found guilty and serving 10 years in prison. So, where does Drake come into this narrative? Well, the connection could be found in his 2022 album, Her loss specifically in the track circle loco this bitch lie about getting shots but she's still a stallion the inclusion of the line lie about getting shots but she's still a stallion was interpreted as a diss against megan since a lot of people believe she was lying when she said that she was shot by tori as there was no dna evidence to prove that he did it there's no dna from tori lanes on that magazine that's lying i told you didn't i tell y'all she was lying Man, that DNA evidence is everything, inconclusive. The entire internet was basically split into two at the time. And at first, Megan claimed that she thought nothing of the bars and that fans were just reaching. But as the number of tweets grew and media outlets exaggerated the rumors, she began to see it differently, prompting a response on her Twitter reading, stop using my shooting for clout. Since when is it cool to joke about women getting shot? You rap dudes are lame, ready to boycott about shoes and clothes, but dogpile on a black woman when she says that one of y'all homeboys abused her. And when the facts come out, remember, your favorite rapper stood behind a dude that shot a female. Even Lil Yachty, who had a hand in the writing process for some of the songs on the album took to social media to defend Drake. So this bitch lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion. It has nothing to do with Megan. It's about women lying about their butt shots. You know, like saying her ass is real when it's fake. By this time, he was being labeled with the term misogynoir, which is. Ah, ah, I forgot it is that he was he was writing some stuff for Drake. I think, I think honestly, we've talked about this before about with that damn trial. But realistically speaking, I think it is that's a little too close to like there's there's nobody else that is that calls himself stallion other than Megan. So to pull that rabbit out of the hat, I I I I'm just like, come on, gang. Come on. I think it is you knew exactly what it is you was doing. What you mean you gonna stop streaming? <laughs> I think honestly that was that like that was bad placement. And I think even just Using the whole level of like, the incident of her getting shot, putting it within rap songs, and then making fun of it. Uh, even and I've talked about the situation with Nicki Minaj talking about like the you know this mo mother, a deceased mother, and people going as far as really finding where her resting place is at. I I think that there ne needs to be a level of some things just need to not be rapped about, and especially with insensitive stuff. Related to anybody really getting shot like that, because that that could be really wholehearted. That's a wholehearted diss, and that's a wholehearted direct, you know, just fucked up line to even say. So you know, Megan, that's what's being famous and titled like haters using your name for called called lock in. I mean, yeah, but it's it's kind of it's kind of weird for men to do it. It, it's weird for anybody to do it, but it's even weirder for a man to sit there and kind of just like use that, you know? I, I don't really, I don't really like respect that at the end of the day, because that's a real life situation. Like, you know, I, God forbid, I, I, I wouldn't imagine how that would be for me to go through something like that. But if I was hearing people that is using my situation of me getting shot and 
over repetitive timing, I would feel a certain type of way too. And the thing that I don't like is the fact that is that Drake never clarified it. He never clarified to say it is a like, oh, it's it has nothing to do with that. I apologize, this isn't this. Because he was the same person doing photo ops with Megan when she first became popping. He kind of does this with a lot of fem- female artists or <laughs> just a lot of females in general. <laughs> so I don't know. Did I still side eye Megan line? As a serious accusation, and she kept ho- posted up laughing. I lay like, listen, that you sounded a lot like a Nicki Minaj fan right now. There's a word know. that describes a deep seated dislike against black women. However, we need to ask ourselves if this was truly a diss at Megan, as there doesn't seem to be much benefit for Drake in doing so. Being that he and Tori had actually developed some tension with each other back in the day, many believe that Drake. They did? So, being they that did? he and Tori had actually developed some tension with each other. Had beef? They was dissing each other. I didn't know that. What the fuck? Back in the day, many believe that Drake definitely wasn't trying to defend him. Plus, it wouldn't be smart to risk angering a large portion of his fan base, which includes black women. The only logical explanation for this being a diss at Megan is this rumor that Drake had been curved by her sometime in the past, leading him to unfollow her. He said they both Canadian. Some dark skin, light skin shit. Stop, stop. I forgot it is. Yeah, they are both uh, Canadian. But being both of y'all being Canadian and then y'all having beef is crazy. It's a crazy <laughs> entendre. Like, like cut that shit out, bro. You're on supposed media. to be together. But once together. Tori was actually found guilty, Megan wanted to get revenge, and she did so on her song Hiss where she had an entire verse dedicated to roasting Drake for things ranging from his liposuction rumors to the ab etching, fake accents, and of course, the part that hurts Drake the most, disrespecting his gangster image, which is something that Drake seems to hold in high regard as he always seems to constantly remind us how gangster he is every chance he gets. This is my thing that I will say, that Drake is a light-skinned nigga. And most light-skinned niggas, it is I... Damn, Shadow. Most light-skinned men, it is that I know, it's either they're a little bit onto the softer side or they do so much more to prove it is their gangster. I feel like Drake is like a mix of the two. You know what I mean? Because I've seen both sides of the spectrum and it's just like, gang, you don't have to prove yourself even more than what a, a right, like brown-skinned, dark-skinned nigga needs to be. And I feel like with Drake that like, come on, gang, like, I get it. I like your music and stuff like that. You cool. But then there's other times it is that you be beefing with everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I cut that shit out, bro. Okay, so we're not going to do is pick sides, Ari. I still. I listen. I, I listen. Is that I'm, I'm just calling it like how it is that I see it. You know what I'm saying? It don't look like you're a mega fan to me, gang. That nigga grew up in a gated community and gangster. <laughs> now, Drake has yet to respond back with a track of his own, but has recently shared a free Tory Lanez post on Instagram, which only fuels this narrative. But while Megan- That's actually- I forgot has recently about shared a free Tory Lanez- I forgot about this. I really did. And I still think this is so bitch made, bro. Because if you beef it with a nigga, now you gonna use the nigga against a woman? Like, this, this is the thing that I'll be talking about. I was like, since when it is that niggas be beefing with women like that? Wholeheartedly. And you was the same one that was on her tip when she first came out. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, Drake. I don't know. Feelings I'm not really, I'm not really like, rocking with this. I don't, I don't this like narrative. this. I don't like but this. But while Megan Thee Stallion wasn't able to take Drake's comments lightly, Ice Spice, another female artist mentioned in the album, chose to respond differently when the Six God name dropped her. When Drake included a line in his song, Back Out Side Boys, stating, she's a 10 trying to rap, but it's good on mute, many interpreted it as a dig at Ice Spice. To understand, it's important to note that when Ice Spice began gaining popularity in 2022, Drake DM'd her on Instagram, and their friendship blossomed after he invited her to his OVO festival oh, no, that summer. That. Linking up with him was so cool. Like, he's mad, nice, and respectful. Um, we went to OVO Fest. This gesture by Drake got a lot of fans speculating that he was on the prowl again. However, Drake would get the short end of the stick, as it was reported shortly after that he unfollowed her on Instagram. It's been speculated that Drake unfollowed you afterwards. Do you want to tell us some tea on that? He did. I don't know why, though. <laughs> Shame on you. That's good PR. That's good PR. That's good PR. I, I kind of like that. I, you know, I don't know if it's true or not. 
but I like how it is that she did that. You know? Because that's something it is like even I would do. If somebody would be like, oh, well, all right, you know, this person that unfollowed you, do you have anything it is that you would like to say about that? I was like, yeah, he did. But I don't know why. And that's honestly, it could be a true statement too. It could very much be a true statement. It could, it's a PR move for sure. <laughs> but it could very much be a true statement. It's just like, hey, listen, she may not even know for real. You know, they may have just woken up and just be like, hey, listen, I ain't rocking with you. But it's, but it's like, what do you do in a situation to where you don't know what's going on? You know what I mean? You don't want to make things too hot, make it more than what it needs to be. Somebody not fucking with you no more. And you're just like, oh, I don't know, you know? Now, it could be some speculation in the fact that it is that, like, she may have said no to him. Whatever the case may be, I can't confirm that or not. So I kind of like how it is that she did that. She, she PR'd that very well. Of, they knew it is that they was going to ask her that question. And she's like, well, hey, listen, yeah, he did, but I don't know the why. You know? Boom. You, Drake, shame on you. You shouldn't have done that. Many believe Drake was essentially curved by Ice Spice at some point during their day. So when he uttered these lines on his album, everyone was expecting Ice Spice to lash out the same way that Megan did. But the way she responded was totally different, as she went on to Twitter to voice that she was happy that she's at least a 10. This reaction from Ice Spice was very surprising and won her a lot of PR with Drake fans. However, it's a different story for many other women who didn't get much positive attention from being associated with Drake. For instance, Millie Bobby Brown, Billie Eilish, and Bella Harris Harris were all teenagers Drake has made contact with as they were at the cusp of fame, oh. which many fans thought was sus if you catch my drift. So this definitely raised a lot of eyebrows, especially considering some of the weird things he would message to them. You know, we text, we just texted each other the other day and he was like, I miss you so much. I was like, I miss you more. Huh? <laughs> Whoa! Wait, one second! This situation is even more weird with Bella Harris, who Drake reportedly rented out an entire restaurant to celebrate her 18th birthday. Although both parties deny that this I ever remember. happened, it was very odd that- I remember her. Celebrate her 18th birthday. Although both parties deny- I remember this photo circulating around. Dang. For her 18th birthday? To be honest with you, she does not look 18. She looked well within her 20s. She looked she look like she just turned 21, to be honest with you. And she looked very mature for an 18-year-old. But that's kind of... Okay, that's a little bit of a side-eye right there. Drake Heike seems like the nigga to be mad as hell if you, if you said no to having sex. I feel like that's like a lot of men, to be honest with you. And this is not me dropping tea, but it kind of is at the same, the same point because it's any man in power that feels the need where it is that they could able to show the fact that like, oh, I have this amount of money. I know this amount of people. I could able to do this, 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 this. I can fly you out and all the other stuff. The moment it is that you say no, it gets to a point to where it is one or two things happens. Men try harder to get at you even when it is that you've said no. I've experienced that and I am experiencing that now. Or you get a man it is that will literally be like, I will fuck you and just shut off every single lining of thing, go and tell other people about, about you to not work with you, to not do anything with you. you like, and like really just like a legitimate like halt to every blessing it is you could possibly have because of this one particular person. But it, it's kind of sad to, to, to say that, but it, it, it is true, men, so men actually do that. Well, that's because I still, don't need all that smoke. Megan's petty, but it's expected. I mean, hey, listen, to be honest with you, Drake is petty. Drake is Drake is a little bit more pettier than Megan. I will I will say that. I just blocked them. They be fiending until you say no, and now they own their feelings. The feelings is an understatement, gang. <laughs> they they be at the level of just like like a man like a man hearing the word no from us women, it becomes very flight or fright. Uh, moment at this rate because you don't know what it is that this man is capable of doing because of the fact you said no for whatever reason right but this is literally what happens what's up chicks there you know what did you send me ah 
I got you. Deny that this ever happened. It was very odd that Bella would post this photo of both of them together with the caption, no place I would rather be. This is certainly irregular behavior for a man of Drake's age. And this celebrity outreach by Drake has become so associated with his name that even new female artists like Tyla expected him to reach out as soon as she started to blow up. Like definitely Drake, like I was low-key waiting for him because right. I knew, hey, he's gonna come, he's right. gonna come. So I was waiting for that follow and hey, he was there. So he followed you on, on Instagram? Yeah. Really though. Now, no one really knows what Drake's intentions are when he reaches out to these women. But we've never had an incident where any of these young celebrities complain about Drake's character. In fact, we've had the complete opposite. I love him. I met him in Australia and... Yo, Reaper K, thank you so much for the five... the five biddies. Damaging that ego when men, women say no to men like Drake. Um, he's right? He's so fantastic and a great friend <clears throat> and a great, uh, great role model. Drake is like the nicest dude I've ever spoken to. I mean, I've only like texted him, but... He's so nice. Like I Spice herself even went out of her way to clear up her relationship with Drake. We talk all the time and like I'll ask him what should I do with this or like how'd you go about this or like did you ever experience that and he'll tell me like I did this and like you should do that too because you can yeah and I'll be like you're right like period. I feel like he's, that. he gives great mental energy yeah no he really does it's like coach vibes and she also did address the misunderstanding with the lyrics we spoke about it <laughs> I feel however the case with tennis legend Serena Williams unfolded differently but before we get into that I need to tell you guys about this video sponsor private internet access now we all know someone who's been hacked or had their personal data leaked and even drake himself was sadly a victim of this earlier this year however if he had this that is actually hilarious bro that's hilarious they come in handy if you happen to be watching a specific netflix show that's not <laughs> available in your country such as the office which isn't available in the US. But if you switch to a UK server, you can watch it. Also, if you're like me and you like gaming online, you can no longer fear DDoS attacks and bandwidth throttling with today's sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access offers unbeatable VPN security with a vast network of over thousands of servers that spread across 91 countries. We're sponsoring this video, but now let's get back to talking about what happened between Serena and Drake. Oh, no, Drake and not, Serena's not, relationship not goes as far back mama. as 2011 when Drake began appearing at all her tennis matches. He also began hinting that they were in a relationship with tweets like this, as well as mentioning her in a few of his songs, kissing her in public, and even got into a beef with fellow rapper Common, who was her ex-boyfriend at the time, oh, leading to yeah. one of the most savage disses of that era, with Drake's verse on Rick Ross's song, Stay Scheming. Eventually, Serena and Drake went their separate ways, with Serena choosing to instead settle down with Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian instead. Although, it didn't seem like that breakup was mutual, since Drake would say some lines in a What's freestyle waterfalls? implying that she wasn't into him anymore. He then made it clear in his song, Middle of the Ocean, where he boldly claimed that Serena's husband was a groupie. He sidebar, Serena, your husband a groupie. This line immediately... Drake, I'm... <laughs> Drake, this is... This... This is some hater shit. <laughs> this is some hater shit, gang. I'm sorry. This is some big hater shit energy, bro. Like... You calling her husband a groupie, but it's just like at the end of the day, the nigga is not only married to your old shorty and put two kids in her. It, it, Rihanna's another example of that too, gang. Like, you know, this nigga Drake is really a petty weirdo, right? Immediately got people talking, with the general consensus being that Drake is wrong for going after a married woman. But Alexis responded in the classiest way possible. The reason I stay winning is because I'm relentless about being the absolute best at whatever I do, including being the best groupie for my wife and daughter. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Nah, that nigga just told you it is straight up that nigga is gonna be winning regardless and yeah that's right i am gonna be a groupie for my wife and my daughter for you talk about you know what i'm saying god damn Ooh, oh okay shout out to you for that i hey listen <laughs> tell him no coach 
And of course, the internet gathered to cook Drake once again. I'ma need a husband like Alexis Ohanian. Stay bitter and mad, Drake. Drake literally just jealous because he wants your wife and he can't have her. And we have to remember, this is not just a married woman, but a married woman with kids. Although when it comes to kids, Nothing quite compares to the relationship he had with the mother of his child, oh, Sophie yeah. Brousseau. Drake and Sophie Brousseau's relationship may have been brief, yet it has eternally bound them through their son, Adonis. The duo, with Brousseau transitioning from an adult star to an artist, was first seen together in January of 2017, following Drake's breakup with Jennifer Lopez. By May, I Brousseau forgot. was claiming to be- I forgot about that. Following Drake's break- the Man, has this nigga gone around. Man, I can't even I can't even be mad at the women at this rate. It's just like, hey, listen, gang, you run around these streets like a little slut, bro. Damn. Damn. He's he's literally taking everything out of the milk out of the pot. Like he's getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that, <laughs> a little bit of this. Oh, you too. You too? You too? You too? You too? Yeah, all right, you too. Like, golly, bro. Break up with Jennifer Lopez by May. And you know what's crazy that I'm that I'm seeing is that all these women it is that be with him, they end up being with the person it is that they was meant to be at this rate. Can we all agree and attest it is that Drake is indeed the problem? <laughs> Look like a problem to me, gang. If nigga, if nigga got a chance that he would have gone after Ariana Grande, please don't speak that into existence because. And she's another one it is that be gone, you know what I mean? Hey, Brousseau was claiming to be pregnant with Drake's baby, a claim initially denied by a representative for Drizzy. However, in May of 2018, the entire world was shocked when a rapper by the name of Pusha T exposed Drake's hidden son in his track story of added on. A baby's involved, it's deeper than rap. We talking character, let me keep with the facts. You Shut, yeah, listen, that nigga Pusha T went ahead and really sat there and put that that whole information out there you know that's your fault gang that's your fault that nigga had had a little bit of the tea and was just like all right bet i'm spilling every single bit of this to the world hey you are hiding a child let that boy come home pusha also claimed that drake intended to reveal his son's existence through an adidas press run a move that many considered to be somewhat underhanded after tons of backlash angry fans and deadbeat dad claims drake opened up about his child on the song emotionless from his album scorpion look at the way we live i wasn't hiding my kid from the world i was hiding the world from my kid then on the song okay, march bro. 14th he talked about sophie saying that they only met twice and that he basically slipped up despite this drake and Brousseau have embraced co-parenting, frequently sharing the joy Adonis brings into their lives on their social media platforms. But what happens when Drake befriends a kid primarily to get closer to his mom? Well, it doesn't always lead to a happy ending either, as seen in the situation with Johanna Leia. In 2021, Drake and Johanna Leia, the mother of basketball prodigy Amari Bailey, were in a relationship for a few months, with their relationship becoming public knowledge in July of that year. During this time, Drake took on a mentoring role for Bailey, who was gearing up to play basketball for UCLA in 2022. At one point, he even gifted Amari with an iced out chain of the owl from his OVO logo, but it was- This, by far, I didn't even know about this. This is- Gang. Gang, this is a little weird, bro. This is a little weird. This is a little weird. I- I can't- I can't condone with this. This is a little weird, gang. This, uh, it's clear that Drake had ulterior motives, as not long after, he was frequently spotted with Amari's that man, mom, Drake really, I Johanna. thought for real, right? Their outings ranged from sitting together courtside at basketball games to more exclusive engagements, such as the time they went viral for having a private dinner at the Dodger Stadium. However, by March of 2022, Leia mentioned in an interview that she was already single and exploring her options. Is, is the certified lover boy still in the mix, so that's, that's done? Um, yeah, I, um... I mean, I'm enjoying life. When it comes to short-lived mm. relationships, Drake is notorious for this. He had flings with notable names such as Hailey Bieber, Tyra Banks, SZA, Kylie Jenner, and many, many more. But while it seems like Drake is the one Dang. who usually rejects being in a relationship with most of these women, there's one girl specifically who Drake would seemingly do anything to have, but Rihanna? somehow failed to in the end, <laughs> Rihanna. 
You see, it all started Damn. in 2009, which was a very turbulent year, marked by Rihanna's very public fallout with Chris Brown. If you don't remember, Chris Brown was accused of assaulting her during their relationship, and this ultimately led to their split that year. Most people expected Rihanna to take a break from dating for a long while after this, but someone unexpected stepped in, Drake. This was the beginning of relationship up, drama that would last for nearly 14 years. At the time, you couldn't escape the rumors. They were seen kissing in public, and when Rihanna was asked about the status of their relationship, she flat out denied any romantic involvement, stating that she prefers hot older men and that she and Drake were just friends. Now, this could have been that Rihanna was just keeping their relationship private, which she has been known to do in the past. But Drake's lyrics in his 2010 song Fireworks seem to tell a different story. As Drake states, I could tell it wasn't love, I just thought you would fuck with me. Who could have predicted Lucky Strike would have you stuck with me? Damn, I kept my wits about me luckily. What happened between us that night? It always seems to trouble me. Lucky Strike was the bowling alley that the two had been seen making out at. Drake clearly felt a strong attachment to Rihanna that she wasn't reciprocating. And he even believed she was curving him because she thought he was clout chasing. Now all of a sudden these gossip rags want to cover me and you making it seem like it happened that way because of me. And this notion was further strengthened by Drake's own statements in an interview that same month where he said, I was a pawn. You know what she was doing to me? She was doing exactly what I've done to so many women throughout my life, which was show them quality time, then disappear. I was like, wow, this feels terrible. But only a year later, mm. he would also admit What's to up, the Gassi? fact that he was deeply hurt by Rihanna, which led him to make the song. However, they would still go on to collaborate on hit songs together, like What's My Name and Take Care in 2011, which seemingly brought them closer and closer every time they performed it. At this point, everyone truly believed that they were an item, even though there was no confirmation. So much so that he even got into a bar brawl over her with Chris Brown. And he was clearly bothered by the topic every time Dang he was asked up. about it in an interview. Don't ask me shit about that man when I come up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and leave that man alone, you know? Stop preying on his insecurities, man. Cause you know, his insecurities are the fact that I make better music than him, that I'm more popping than him. And That's, yo, that, how you gonna sit there and say to leave that man alone, but then you sit there and say it is like, oh, I, I dress better than him. I got better songs than him. I'm smarter than him. My drips better, my bitch better. <laughs> like, dang. Dang, that's crazy. You just literally contradicted yourself within seconds, bro. Golly. You said he ain't lying? Let's not sit there and listen. As much as Chris Brown has quite some trouble within some legal stuff, we cannot sit there and say that this man's not talented. We cannot say it is that this man, Chris Brown, is not so freaking talented. You can't say that, bro. What in the light skin hyper, bro? <laughs> light skin on light skin crime. You know what, bro? And that at one point in life, you know what I'm saying, the woman that he loves fell into my lap. I did what a real nigga would do and treated her with respect. From this point onwards, That's their relationship was that he pretty said that. complicated, to say the least. From Dang. Drake saying that they had their moment in 2013. We we had our, our moment, and, you know, I mean, um, always, always support and, and have love for her and yeah. To them being caught on yet another date in 2014. Even after their iconic collaboration in 2016 on Rihanna's song Work, Rihanna would go on to Ellen saying that she was still single. I'm single right now mm -hmm. and I just think that I just have so much on my plate that I can't even find the time to entertain a, a, a steady relationship or anything serious or even a text. But it very much appeared that she had a thing going on with Drake that she didn't want the world to know about at all. Especially I mean, why can't the good sis have somewhat of the, you know what I'm saying? Have like the tune-up guy and then she continue to keep working on her brand and her business like what it is that she did? May I add it is that during this time that this, they made this in what, 2016? Then she had anti, Dan on top of that too got the whole business of Fenty and you see how big and successful it is that turned out to be Fenty has now dropped in China at this rate of how well it's been doing so the good sis like I said she just wasn't feeling the dude let's call it for what it is he was the tune-up guy he was the guy it is the like hey listen you know what I'm saying if I if I want a little if I want a little of attention or I want a little something something then I'll hit him up. But as far as I'm concerned, like, eh, I'm not really trying to, I'm not really trying to deal with dudes like that. I mean, are we really going to be mad at Rihanna about that? No. I sure as hell won't be mad at her. It's like, look, you didn't want to claim dude. And I see why. 
after this happened at the VMAs in August Woman of disappeared as an anti. She's someone I've been in love with since I was 22 years old. This, this is a face right here that's just like, oh. No, 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 no. Don't do this here. Don't do this here. Don't do this here. I am uncomfortable. Don't do this here. I'm uncomfortable. And he proceeds to continue to keep doing it. She's one, one of my, my best, best friends in the world. In the world. All, All my, my adult, adult life, life, I've looked up, up to her, her even though she's younger than me. Than me. She's, she's a, a living, living breathing, breathing legend, legend in our industry, industry ladies, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. Because of this, Drake was being clowned by the fans online with people saying stuff like, a moment of silence for my dude in the friend zone. Shit was deeper <laughs> than the friend zone. Felt like Rihanna treats him like an old Uncle Bill. Drake the type of Damn. guy to ask where my hug at. Although this was pretty embarrassing for Drake, he would still catch a public W only a few weeks later. As he was- If a nigga confesses undying love to me in a public setting and acting like she, I'm acting like she did and then blocking you, bye. <laughs> nah. Being kissing Rihanna on stage while performing in his Miami concert. But this is where the W's with Rihanna kind of come to an end for Drake. Yo, stop telling people you love me. They split up in October of 2016, and Rihanna would go on to state that they weren't even friends anymore in 2018, which some rumors claim was because Drake cheated on her. Although Rihanna had moved on from the relationship, she would be spotted with Drake once again at his birthday party the next year. It seemed like Drake had resolved their issues, with Drake being happy to see her again. And when Rihanna broke up with her new partner in 2020, Drake couldn't wait to get the ball rolling on their relationship once again. Unfortunately for Drake, ASAP Rocky would eventually come into the picture, completely ruining any chance Drake had of rebuilding a relationship with Rihanna and opening the gates for him to get clowned by everyone once again. Fast forward mm. to 2023, and Drake was utterly sick of everyone telling him how bad he fumbled Rihanna. And he vented his frustration out on his album For All the Dogs with the track Fear of Heights when he disses Rihanna saying, and the sex was average with you, now I'm anti cause I had it with you. And I had way better bitches than your TVH. The word anti is in reference to Rihanna's last album, Anti. Oh boo hoo, nigga. <laughs> you just upset at the fact that it is. You just upset at the fact that it is like, bro, she has moved on, bro. That's one thing it is. That's that's worse than a nigga it is that's just that goes ahead and just do all of that crazy shit. When you trying to get rid of the nigga, bro. Like, right, cry, cry baby ass nigga. That, that's worse than that. Nothing is worse than having someone of your past a nigga pillow talking. Pillow talking on both sides of the spectrum. You pillow talking about the same person it is that you was wholeheartedly in love with. I'm looking at you sideways because you had a whole different tone of voice when it is you was in love with shorty and everything. Now all of a sudden it is like, oh yeah, the shit is average. Oh yeah, this, this, and this, blah, 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 blah. Like, cut that shit out, bro. Just say it is you heartbroken and called it a day at this rate. As he implies that sex with Rihanna was mid, which is kind of weird to say about a woman you spent 14 years of your life chasing after. And he would even drag ASAP <laughs> Rocky into the mix saying, that man, he's still with you, he can't leave. Y'all go on vacation, I bet it's auntie. Antes is a popular location in Rihanna's home country, Barbados, and he hits Rocky again with I Ain't Pretty Flacco, bitch, this shit get really rocky on the song Another Late Night, with Pretty Flacco being a reference to ASAP Rocky's nickname. But at this point, it's pretty safe to say that Drake still has Rihanna on his mind to this day, highlighted by Here, people's yeah. comments on his music such as, damn, Riri hurt him bad. And it's so funny how one minute dudes be sprung singing love songs and then they get burned. And then all of a sudden the pussy was whack, LMAO. These days, Drake is clearly still salty. He wasn't able to secure his relationship with Rihanna. I mean, just look at what he does when his collab with Rihanna comes up during one of his concerts. Yeah. I don't sing this song anymore. You can sing it for me. And amidst all we of his talked many about how bitch made that is. Drake now feels as if there's something missing in his life. It'd have to be somebody that, you know, that I get along with so much to the point that when we're separate, I'm feeling like I can't function properly without their presence. I have come across it a few times. Yeah. I've yet to be able to hold on to it uh, for whatever reason. Because you're the problem, gang. That's why. And until it is that you figure out your inner demons and solve all those issues, Every woman it is that you come across moving forward is just not going to be within your grasp. It's just not at this rate. And I, that kind of goes for why is PG like this for the Caribbean women? Nah, you're sick. <laughs> Leave that man PG alone, bro. But 
No, like on, on a serious note re- relating to Drake, I guess this is like conclu- a conclusion to this, really. Um, for any man that's like, that's like this, I'm sure it is that like men have been have come across a woman that is like they they've fallen in love with and it didn't work out and everything like that. That's something it is that you have to figure out within you because if you're around all these axis of women and everything like that and none of them is staying with you long enough like that you are indeed the problem right reaper king it's it, it's his fault realistically so i don't i don't know if i have that level of sympathy you have to figure out whatever those inner demons it is that you have you need to go figure that out you need to go solve those issues i'm not going to say level of therapy because therapy can work for people and then it doesn't at the same time but Whatever those inner demons it is that you have, it could be something within your childhood, you're repairing some relationships with some people that you've been meaning to do, or just at the level of just kind of just chilling out, just accepting, learn to accept some things within yourself and learn to, for, to forgive yourself. That's the only way it is you really are going to go ahead and come across somebody it is that is meant for you, gang. Drake comes on a little too strong sometimes. Like That's another thing, too. And I think anytime where it is that like men or even just women in general, if they come on to you really, really, really strong at first, that is not love in any form of way. That's love bombing. And then that love bombing shit gets very scary, y'all. It gets so scary to think about that. Like somebody so infatuated with you to the point to where it is that like, oh my God, like they can't breathe without you and all this other stuff, especially so early. Like, that is a problem for me. That is a, that's a huge problem for me. So, yeah, like that one interview that he had with that one lady in the bed in the bedroom. I think I know which one it is. You, t- I th- I think there's just so many women. You know what I'm saying? Not 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 to me like talking shit, but like that's me being serious, patiently waiting for the sexy red dish. You think so? You you think you think it is a like. I wouldn't be surprised, but y'all think it is sexy, right? Gonna be that next next woman that is he disses. That's gonna be crazy. That is a yeah, it's obsession. Yeah, it's crazy level obsession. And that's what happened with me. My girl love bombed me, and I wasn't ready. And not my mom saying that it's love, you know. Stalker vibes for sure, for sure. But hey, listen, uh, Luisa. I hope hopefully it isn't. I'm saying your name correctly. Shout outs to you, gang. Thank you so much for the video. That was Drake's dark history with female celebrities. Shout outs to you. Shout outs to y'all into the chat. And shout outs to you at home. I will catch y'all in the next video.